What do I use to define the desired state or the resources that I need, that I manage? Or what should you use to define the desired state? Should it be Terraform, Pulumi, Helm, Customize, Ansible? Maybe it shouldn't be any of those tools. Maybe it is none of those. I, for example, use only, almost exclusively YAML. Sometimes I sprinkle it with customize and that's all that I need. Or to be more precise, I might use Terraform or Pulumi or Helm or similar solutions, but not for the reasons you might expect. Not for the reasons you might have chosen those tools. Let me explain. Terraform, for example, has HCL which is a domain-specific declarative, more or less, language used to define what we want. Pulumi, on the other hand, went a different direction and says, no, you shouldn't use uh, YAML or JSON, you should use TypeScript or JavaScript or Go or Python. You know, programming languages you're familiar with, and the reason for that is because declarative language is not a good choice because the desired state is too complex to define in a declarative format, like. YAML or JSON. Pulum itself will convert uh, what you specify into declarative format and then send it to an API of a provider that you're using. Helm, on the other hand, chose to sprinkle YAML with Go templates so that we have templating solution to define Kubernetes resources because, hey, Kubernetes resources are so complex and there are so many of them and there are so many variations that we need a templating engine to manage somehow the definition of all the resources we have. Customize, on the other hand, said, no, templating is not a good idea. We are going to use YAML and combine it with overlay, so we are going to overlay one YAML with another because templating is silly, let's overlay stuff instead. All those tools are trying to solve the inherent complexity in defining cloud, infrastructure, Kubernetes, or any other type of resources. Instead of making it less painful to manage such complexity, we should ask ourselves, why do we have such complexity in the first place? And the answer is very simple. Almost all service providers are giving us building blocks so that their solutions can work for everyone. Those are more or less unopinionated solutions that are tailored made to allow almost any permutation that we might need. EKS clusters, for example, consist of resources like EKS, node groups, VPCs, subnets, internet gateways, etc., etc. You need to combine all those to get something that is functionally and effectively a Kubernetes cluster. Let me think of another example. Applications, for example. Applications running in Kubernetes consist of deployments, services, ingresses, virtual services, persistent volumes, and so on and so forth. We are faced one more time with building blocks. We have different small pieces that we need to assemble to get exactly what we need. And what we need is, in this context, an application. And if that application needs a database, then even more resources need to be thrown into the mix. Even more building blocks need to be assembled into something that uh, represents what we truly need. An application, a cluster, a server, a database, and so on and so forth. Now, all that, all those building blocks are absolutely amazing. They allow us to create solutions that fit our specific needs. But there is an alternative. Instead of dealing with building blocks, we can use an opinionated platform, a ready-to-go solution waiting for us to push our code or binaries or whatever we are using. A good example of that is Heroku. It is simple because it is opinionated. And it is not opinionated by you, it is vendor opinionated. There is no need for Terraform or Pulumi or Helm or Customize and so on and so forth. And even if there is a need 
to use any of those tools, any of them should be equally good because Heroku is simple, simple for the user not simple for what it does. There is no user facing complexity, so there are no differences. It doesn't matter which tool you use to define what you're running in Heroku. So now you might be asking, hey, why isn't everybody using Heroku or Heroku-like solutions? And the answer is relatively simple. Those solutions, vendor opinionated platforms, do not adapt to our needs we need to adapt to them. There is limited or no flexibility of what we can do, how we can do, and so on and so forth. They're opinionated, they accept things in certain way, and if that certain way or that process or whatever we're doing, it does not fit our needs, we need to move on, we need to move somewhere else. And if vendor opinionated tools or platforms would add flexibility to what they're doing, then they wouldn't be very opinionated after all. They would convert themselves into building blocks like AWS and Azure and Google Cloud and Alibaba. The more flexibility we add into something that is opinionated, the less opinionated that something is. And most of the bigger companies or more complex systems cannot adapt everything that exists into an opinionated platform. They need somehow platforms to adapt to them. And that means that we are back to the building blocks story and we can easily discard vendor opinionated platforms because they do not work in complex scenarios. For a new company, for a small startup, and so on and so forth, they are absolutely amazing. But the moment the company grows, the moment the company discovers legacy, the moment there is something special going on, opinionated vendor opinionated solutions do not work. So Heroku is out, going back to the building blocks. And those building blocks are the main reason why we have Terraform and Pulumi and Helm and similar solutions. And they're great tools, absolutely amazing. They help us manage the complexity that is inherent to assembling solutions on client side. And that's where the problem lies. The issue is that we are trying to assemble different building blocks on client side instead of somewhere else, instead of doing the same thing that Heroku and similar solutions are doing and moving complexity to servers, to clusters, instead of keeping them on our laptops. In other words, all those solutions that I mentioned so far are solving the complexity problem, the complexity issue in a wrong place. Your laptop or your desktop is not the place where we should be dealing with those building blocks. And just to be clear, in this context, when I say you, I mean a consumer of a service, not necessarily a person who might be creating the platform in the first place, but I'll get to that later. All in all, we should be able to define what a cluster is, what an application is, what a database is, what are the relations between all those and many other types of logical groups of those building blocks. Now, at this moment, you might say, hey, that's exactly why we have Terraform modules or Helm charts and so on and so forth. All those are enabling somebody to define what something is so that somebody else can consume that in something that resembles a service but is not really a service but rather an API call through a CLI command and so on and so forth. And that's what Terraform modules and similar tools are doing, but those are only workarounds. Those are not real solutions. Heroku or similar tools did not solve the complexity by giving us Terraform modules. Instead, they solved the issue by creating higher level services that others can consume. What those services do is complex. It's complicated. It requires effort and time, but how we consume services is or should be extremely simple because, again, complexity is moved somewhere else outside of our laptops into a server, a cluster, a vendor control data center, and so on and so forth. Yet, 
as I said, Heroku-like solutions do not work for complex systems. Our systems are opinionated and there is room for only one opinion. So either what we have is opinionated or what vendors offer us is opinionated and it cannot be both ways. So client-side solutions are not good because they're forcing us to deal with building blocks instead of services. Opinionated services, vendor opinionated services are also not good, at least not for all of us. So what's the solution? Well, it's relatively simple, at least in theory, in practice, it might require a bit of work. And the solution is to create your own services, to create our own services, to create our own Heroku. If we do that, then it will become irrelevant whether we're using Pulumi or Helm or Customize or Terraform or whichever other tool we use to define something because that something is going to become simple. Because think about it, would anyone say no to Heroku if that something would behave like Heroku or similar tools but be tailor-made for our own needs? If we can get both, if we can get a platform that is opinionated but based on our own opinion, on opinion of a company who is using that platform. Nobody would say no to that. Everybody wants Heroku. It's just that Heroku is not doing what they wanted to do, but the way how it's doing it, the way how we interact with Heroku is a golden standard. It's what everybody wants. If we could just make our own services, the problem would be solved. So what we really, really, really need is a separation between services and service consumers. Clear separation between client side and server side. Service consumers, people who want to consume a service are on client side, but the services themselves should be on server side. And when I say services, again, I don't mean building blocks. A subnet is not a service. EKS cluster without a node group is not a service. And without VPC is still not a service. And without internet gateway is still not a service. Only when we combine all those things together and put it somewhere, server side, we get a service like, hey, give me a cluster. Hey, I have a backend application. Hey, I have a database. I don't care where it's running. I just care that it's there and that it's big or small or whatever the criteria is. So here it goes. Here's the solution, the widely adopted solution today to do something like that, even though not everybody is aware of it. And that's Kubernetes operators. We create operators, which is a collection of custom resource definitions and controllers and a few other things. And then we have services running in our clusters, ready to be consumed in an easy way by somebody, by everybody. And those services can and should be tailor-made to do exactly what we need them to do. So we might still need a templating engine or something equivalent to something like that, but only to create those services, not to create definitions of how we consume those services. Maybe we need those things, maybe we don't, maybe we can create those operators through pure YAML, maybe we might need customized, maybe we are going to write them in Go, doesn't matter, but for the end user, for a consumer, there is no need for any of those templating tools or whatever we call them today, infrastructure as code or Helm or customize, simply because things can be and should be simple. So if I need an application, then somebody, SRE, DevOps, operators, whatever the expertise is, can create something like, hey, application, this is a definition of an application. This is a custom resource definition tailor-made for what we need. You can claim it and then you just need to specify through labels or whichever other method you want, what flavor of application you have, like front-end, back-end, back-end with the database. Put a couple of parameters and off we go. And all the processing and permutations and all the extractions and the variations of that something and how to manage that something is on the server side, in this case, in Kubernetes, which will expand this into all the resources needed. Similarly, with the database, we can have uh, something called SQL and we can claim it. And we can specify through labels whether it should run in uh, AWS and whether it should be Postgres.
Postgres or MySQL or maybe in Azure or maybe in Google and then we specify a couple of parameters, whatever is needed for somebody to consume that server. And then that's something, if it's AWS should run in AWS and it should expand into subnets and VPCs and RDS and so on and so forth. And if that same database should run in Kubernetes, it should expand within the cluster or outside of the cluster. That, that's the job of controllers. Anyway, it should expand into stateful set and deployment and service and so on and so forth. That's the complexity that should run and be processed on the server side so that I, as a consumer, can specify it in an easy way and somebody else can define what that something is. What does it mean to have an application in this specific company, this specific type of application, database, and so on and so forth. The point I'm trying to make is that if we have something as simple as those 30, 40 lines of YAML, do we need Terraform to define that? No. Do we need Pulumi? Absolutely not. Helm, again, we do not need those things because all of a sudden we have something very, very easy to define because what that really is, what are all the building blocks involved in that is not living on our laptops, it is living in clusters. Vendors need those things. Their solutions need to encompass an infinite number of permutations and solutions but those done for a company do not. There is no infinite amount of permutations that we need for our applications. There is maybe one or two or five. They cannot be defined by somebody else because you're the only one who knows what an application is, what a cluster is, what a database is, and so on and so forth. So you have to create services that others in your company will consume. But those who consume those services do not need anything but the simplest possible definition that is usually 20, 30 lines of YAML. If you don't like YAML, go for JSON. In this case, it's YAML because I'm showing you crossplane or I showed you crossplane a minute ago. Let's see another example. Let's say we need a cluster, right? I already mentioned EKS. To run a cluster in AWS, Kubernetes cluster, we need uh, EKS itself, node groups, subnets, VPCs, Internet Gateway, and so on and so forth. And if we combine all that and put it inside or define it as a custom resource definition that exposes only the things that matter, because let's face it, for majority of people, most of those things do not matter. And, but if we do expose only the things that matter, we get something as simple as this YAML that is 15 lines long or something like that, that expands into hundreds and hundreds of lines of definition of what that something is, of those building blocks, but that is happening on a cluster side. Here, all I have to do as a consumer to say, hey, I want a cluster. I'm going to claim a cluster. I'm going to define a couple of matching labels that uh, say, hey, that cluster should be in AWS. It should be EKS type of cluster. Here are a few parameters. Store the connection string kubeconfig into this secret. Off you go. Do I need any templating engine or anything like that to define that? I do not. Whomever is creating those operators might do it one way or another, but as a consumer, it must be simple. And when it's simple, we do not need any of those tools, templating tools. So, all in all, here's the message. Keep it simple for consumers. Move the complexity to server side. Create Kubernetes operators. Use crossplane compositions. And if you don't know what crossplane compositions are, then there's a link to the video over there down in the description. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Cheers. Thank you.